This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 12, Section 2, Chemical Calculations. In this section, you're going to construct mole ratios from a balanced equation and apply those ratios to these stoichiometric calculations. You're going to calculate stoichiometric quantities from these balanced equations using those units, moles, mass, particles, and volume. Airbags inflate almost instantaneously upon a car's impact. The effectiveness of airbags is based on the rapid conversion of a small mass of sodium azad into a large volume of gas. The gas fills an airbag, preventing the driver from hitting the steering wheel or dashboard. The entire reaction occurs in less than a second. In this section, you will learn how to use a balanced equation to calculate the amount of product formed in chemical reactions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is real life chemistry. This is what chemists use on a daily basis, stoichiometry, to solve a problem. And what's the problem? Well, coming up with a substance, how much of that substance is needed to fill an airbag to the correct amount of gas. So think about this, too little gas produced would almost be like an inflated balloon and as if there was no pillow there at all and the head would still hit the steering wheel or too much gas produced think of a balloon again if you blow it up too much and put too much air in it it pops and again deflates so you as if you wouldn't have uh, an airbag at all so the chemist really had to come up with the exact amount in order to make that proper pillow of an airbag so first some information so what is that most important chemist unit? Hopefully in the back of your mind you're thinking, well, the only new unit you learned in chemistry is the mole. And that mole unit is really, really important, but it's also a unit that we don't have a measuring tool for. And this is where those quantities uh, are really important. So if I know how much moles I need for a reaction to occur, then I have to convert those moles to grams, let's say, so that I know how much mass uh, of that substance to mass out using a measuring tool like a balance. So now that you understand what a chemical equation tells us, now we can convert from moles of one substance to moles of another, again, using those coefficients from a balanced chemical uh, reaction. So this mole re uh, ratio gives us this conversion factor, uh, and it's, again, it's derived from those coefficients from a balanced equation in terms of moles. So doesn't this look like a dimensional analysis problem? The only thing that probably strikes you as odd is, number one, the unit of moles. That's the only unit we're dealing with. But then look a little further. So you have a number, you have a unit, and now we're going to also include the substance. And that's going to be really important for these stoichiometry problems. So we'll start out with what's given or what we have. We're going to use a mole ratio to get from moles of what we have to moles of what we want and then do our calculation. So I'm going to really stress in these problems that you're going to need a number and a unit, something you're used to. But now we're going to have to go above and beyond and include a substance for every single part of our dimensional analysis problem. So guys, I don't want to scare you, but this is ultimately what we're going to do. This is going to be a stoichiometry setup. But let's look at the parts. If we look at the left side, we have grams, liters, particles, two moles. Ooh, doesn't that look like mole island? But that's only for one particular substance, in this case, A. Look at the right side. If I have moles and I want to go to grams, liters, or particles, hmm, that should also look like mole island. But again, only for one substance, in this case, B. So now let's look at the middle. This middle part is mole ratio. This is the part we're going to focus on just for this a particular section of notes. This mole ratio is going to use those coefficients from a balanced chemical equation to get us to go from substance A to substance B. This is going to be the mole ratio. This is going to help us get from substance one to substance two. All right, so now we need to use those uh, coefficients in our balanced equation. All right, so now off to our notes packet. So the easiest way to do this is to uh, do a practice problem. Uh, if you don't have out your calculator already, you might also want to pause and get your calculator out. So it says, how many moles of water can be produced when five moles of oxygen re react with hydrogen? So 
pause, fill in those blanks, come up with a balanced equation from those words, and then play to hear Mayan. All right, guys, so you should have wrote in your notes packet, the blanks, you should have read as you wrote, and you should have came up with a balanced chemical equation. And I just did it in the order that was given to me in the problem. Now, now step two is think about what is given and what is wanted. Hmm, well, the problem tells us that we are given oxygen and we want water, okay? Now, remember how in mole problems I would do a question mark with what we want and I would do a star for where my starting point was? Well, I'm going to do something similar, except I'm going to put this stuff underneath my reaction. So my question mark and units goes under my substance in my reaction. What I'm starting with, the number and units, goes underneath my uh, substance that I'm starting with, the, the given information. This is going to be really important and really helpful when we do stoichiometry problems. All right, guys, so now let's think about that ratio. Well, the ratio of moles using those coefficients is 1 to 2. But if I think about that mole ratio as a conversion factor, it's either going to be oxygen over water or water over oxygen. And that's where that third part of every single step in your stoichiometry problem needs that substance label. Okay, so number, unit, and substance is going to be really important because it's going to help us decide which way to use our mole ratio conversion. All right, guys, so now the mathematics. We're going to start uh, with our number like we've always done in the past, but notice again, number, unit, substance. Multiply by my conversion line. What's going to go on the bottom? As always, I want to cancel this out, but it's not going to just be moles. It's going to be moles of oxygen because now my unit really is the unit and the substance. So what do I want to go to? Well, I want to go to moles of water. Where are those numbers going to come from? In this case, now it's going to come from the coefficients. So oxygen doesn't have a number in front of it. Oh, right. So that's a understood one. And there's a two in front of the water, so that's that. So again, most of you can do the mathematics pretty easily, but I do want to remind you that when we get to stoichiometry, we're going to have three individual co uh, conversion factors. So do your mathematics in order. Five divided by one times two divided by one gives us those 10 moles of water is our answer. So I want to remind you that you always are going to need number, unit, substance. All right, here we go. So just a couple of other things. The mole ratio is the only new step and it's between substances. You will not always be given a reactant to go to a product. This third bullet tells you that you can start at any substance and you can end at any substance. So it can go reactant to product, but it could also go product to reactant or reactant to reactant, okay? So don't, so don't get mixed up of what they give you. Just understand what's given and what you want. So example two, we'll do this one again together. So pause, read, and then balance the equation. So hopefully you paused and you came up with a balanced chemical equation of this. Now remember, instead of putting the question mark and the star, we're going to put the information underneath our balanced equation. So my question mark in this case is going to go under aluminum. And what I have, uh, or my starting point, is going to go under the aluminum oxide. All right, here's the setup. So we're going to start with what's given. We're going to multiply it by a line. The information on the bottom needs to match up with what I started with so I can cancel that out. So again, unit and substance. What do I want? I want those moles of aluminum. So guess what, guys? I'm going to use the coefficient number. So a 2 is going to go with the aluminum oxide and a 4 is going to go with the aluminum. So again, pause and do the mathematics. Hopefully you got that as an answer. All right, here we go, guys. And remember, number, unit, substance with everything. All right, guys, pause the video. Come up with those two practice problems answer. Again, show the work. And notice, guys, I gave you the same exact uh, reaction. So now you're just dealing with what you want and where you're going. All right, guys, so hopefully you did letter A correct. Notice I color coordinated everything. Pause the video and make sure you have the setup exactly correct. And here's B. 
So hopefully that makes sense. And if not, guys, this is where in the margins, you might want to put a little note, I'm still not understanding this part, or I'm still not understanding that part. But hopefully this makes sense. You have a balanced equation, question mark under what you want, and your, sub, your, your, your number and unit under the substance you have. All right, guys, so here's just a different way of looking at it. So guys, going back to the recipe, you know, I like to relate everything to food, right? So if I have a recipe for two eggs and two flours and one sugar and 12 milks, will give me those 12 cookies. I said, I'm sorry, two milks, right? Two milks give us those 12 cookies. Then these are all just going to be ratios, right? Or proportions, two to two to one to two to 12. Well, guys, if I look at this, if I need two eggs for every 12 cookies, that's just a ratio. How about two flours for every sugar? A ratio. Two milks to 12 cookies, a ratio, right? So the same thing happens in a balanced equation. Those coefficients represent the mole ratio. However, we just have to look at that mole ratio as which way are we gonna use that conversion? Which way are we gonna go from aluminum oxide to oxygen? Which way are we gonna go from oxygen to aluminum, let's say, okay? So again, with our mole ratios, we just got to be careful of which way we're going to put that conversion. And that's why looking at the substance, including the substance in our problem, is going to be really, really important and really, really helpful. All right, guys, we will see you in class for any questions. Hopefully it's starting to make sense uh, and we're going to put everything together uh, next video.